morning, everyone. Coffee can do one of two things. It can either make my day or break my day. It's, it's amazing how the world can change through the eyes of one cup of coffee. As long as there's coffee in the world, how bad could things really be? I never laugh until I have my first cup of coffee. Coffee solves all of our problems. It starts with just that first sip. Life without coffee is like something without something. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. Without my coffee, I would have zero personality. So let's explore the world of coffee. We're gonna talk about the good parts of coffee and the bad parts of coffee. It's not complicated, folks. It's water and beans. That's it. But yet, why do so many people encounter a bad cup of coffee? The first nemesis of coffee is air. All right, let's talk coffee beans and coffee grounds. Now, as we go through this video, I'm gonna have a flavor meter, which will show either good or bad. So most people start with coffee grounds. Why? Because it's easy. You don't have to grind it and you can just throw it into your coffee filter and you're ready to go. Bad idea, bad, bad. You see, it's the convenience factor that drives people to use ground coffee. But you don't want to do that because that's going to yield not the best coffee every single time. So you always want to start with fresh beans because the beans are what hold the aroma, the oils, and the flavor. So the second these coffee beans are ground, the clock starts ticking and not in a good way. Don't be fooled by coffee beans that are ground, airtight sealed, and packaged in a capsule. Don't be fooled by those at all. But as I've stated, air and coffee do not go well together. And that is why we store our coffee beans in an airtight sealed container with two lids. So when we go to have our coffee in the morning, we take this lid off, here's another lid, and you literally pull it up. Oh, and the beans smell amazing, as if they just came out of a bag. This is key. This is key to making your first good cup of coffee. Now I'm gonna show you how a 20 to $30 coffee maker can yield the best coffee you've ever, ever had. So we've lived in Washington State, Coffee Capital Central. And we have gone to different coffee stores where it's almost like a wine tasting, but it's with for coffee and espressos and lattes, and it's amazing. And then they sell all of their coffee, greatest and latest coffee equipment. And we have gotten very high-end coffee makers and cappuccino makers, and we have found that it's not about your equipment that will yield that good coffee, it's the process. So now we're gonna jump into how to make this great cup of coffee that will brighten and start your day. I have to tell you, a good coffee grinder is more important than your coffee maker. And I'm not talking about Keurig. I mean, what I'm gonna be talking about is apples and oranges. I have tried Keurig, not impressed. Don't find it to be great coffee. I promise you, if you do our process, you won't be disappointed. You will say, whoa, apples and oranges, throw out the Keurig and let's get a coffee maker. Hands down, hands down, I promise you. So real quick, here's the rundown on how we make our coffee. So you're gonna start with high quality coffee beans and filtered water. No tap water, no bueno, no good. Grind your beans in a really good coffee grinder Heat up your coffee cups, more about that later. Place your ground coffee into your coffee filter. Start the machine, and if you're like me, go grab your creamer, set it out, grab your cute 
coffee mugs and just wait for that aroma to fill the house until you have your first cup of delicious coffee. What do you say, let's go make some coffee. I'll show you the process. Make some coffee, you wanna go? Let's go make coffee. Let's go, come on. Oh, you're excited too. Going to the fridge to get some filtered water. Mr. Coffee, now we're adding filtered water. Now guys, I'm about to grind the coffee. This is the most important piece of equipment in coffee making. It is a little spendy, but over the long haul, it is worth it if you're gonna start your day on a good note, right? Right? So this right here is a burr grinder by KitchenAid. It is built like a tank. We have had it for tons of years. I believe they still sell it. And it is the best, most important piece of equipment in coffee making. Now you don't wanna get yourself one of those cheapo, cheapo coffee grinders. They're blade grinders, I guess, because it's not gonna be consistent. This grinder right here has different notches for grinding your coffee. And you're gonna get a much more consistent grind and it's gonna make your coffee taste great every time. So we make a full pot of coffee, so you'll just have to judge it depending on how many people drink coffee in your home, but we do a cup. And so here I go into my air sealed container, and then I scoop out about a cup of beans. Into the hopper they go. Put this top on, and now we're ready to grind. We set ours to six, and now I'm just gonna flip the button on the side. And you can see the coffee is blending into the glass container. Grinds look like. I can't even tell you how amazing this smells. My filter, and give it a good shake. And we are ready to rock and roll. All right, we like our coffee strong in this house, so I'm gonna come over here and start the coffee maker, and then you can do different brew strengths, and we like it strong. So that indicates that it's gonna be strong, and now it's starting. Another thing we like to do is sometimes come in here and give the coffee grinds a good stir. So I'm telling you this step, makes the coffee taste so amazing because every little grind gets wet. So we like to switch up our coffee almost monthly to try different beans. And we're really liking these beans. These are organic, real good coffee company out of Seattle, Washington, two pounds, morning just got better, and it sure did and it comes in this nice huge bag. And so what we do is we pour them out into that tight um, sealed container and then there's just a little bit left but it's got a really, really good seal on it. And um, you can use this for drip coffee, um, French roast or a pour over. Highly recommend and I will be linking this in my Amazon store if you wanna try it out. You can, you can get mild too but we're like i said we like dark roast so this is a winner so i forgot to mention that your coffee temperature is another one of the most important things you want your coffee temperature to be about 205 degrees so what we like to do is before we pour our coffee into our mugs we like to heat our coffee mugs and there's two ways you can do it you can simply pour piping hot water from your tap into your coffee mugs and just simply let them sit on the counter while your coffee is brewing. Or you can fill your coffee mugs with some water, 
and stick them in the microwave for about 30, 40 seconds and just let them sit. And then once your coffee's done brewing, you dump the water, you come over here, you pour your coffee, put in your creamer or whatever it is that floats your boat, and then you're ready to have coffee. And I promise you, if you do these steps, you're gonna have the best cup of coffee every single time. And these little steps, literally, it doesn't take much time at all to make this coffee. It will be so worth it and your morning will be long. And if you don't believe me, do a taste test for yourself. Get yourself a cold mug, get yourself a piping hot mug, and then pour your coffee in, put your cream or whatever, and do a taste test. You will see that every single time that hot cup of coffee is gonna taste 10 times better. Promise. Now we wanted to test the temperature of our coffee and it's 196. So just for kicks, we're gonna brew a Keurig and do a taste test. So we have this really cool refrigerator that actually comes with a Keurig. So, and it talks to you too. It's very important to place the cup under the brewer on the right side of the dispenser. And that's all the coffee that the Keurig made. I would literally have to do two of those to fill my coffee up where I want it. So, not liking that. Land of Lakes, half and half. So I'm gonna test taste the Keurig coffee, ground coffee. What's there to say about this? I don't really have anything to, good to say about this. It's just okay. This is not gonna make me sing. It's not gonna make me sing, guys. Let's go in for the pot of coffee. Look at the steam. Look how much warmer this coffee is. Are you seeing it? Are you feeling it? All right. Cheers. Cheers. The aroma, amazing. So good. So good. Now this, it is well with my soul. Let's taste. So good. <laughs> So good. So, so good. I might have to break out a tune or two. Many of you asked and you shall receive. So guys, I know a lot of you asked how to make, how do I make my coffee? This is how I make it. It is literally the perfect cup every time. It's not bitter. It doesn't taste old. It tastes amazing. Amazing. Way better than Starbucks. Cheers. All right, guys. Now that we've made some coffee, let's get into some decorating. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, guys. We're doing a little fall project in this cute little fall wheelbarrow from Hobby Lobby. And these are the items you're going to need. These are from, I believe, Walmarts. And I've got three little fall leaf floral picks. I've got three of these from Hobby Lobby. And then I've got just some miscellaneous pumpkins and gourds. Um, one of these from Walmart. And then I've got some of these fall leaf picks from Hobby Lobby. And that is going to make up my cute little arrangement that will go in front of my fall tree.
going to start with these. And I have bent these, and I'm just going to put them basically in each corner. And I want them sort of cascading off the sides. Just like that. Then I'm going in with these leaves as my filler. And I took a few seconds to fluff these out. This is so simple, so simple. And one more. And then I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna layer these on the ends. I'm going to do one on this end, one on this end, and then kind of go in at an angle right here. So guys, I got this cute little scarecrow at Dollar General in Alabama back in 2000, probably six or seven. And isn't he cute? Um, let me turn these lights down so you can see what he does. But look and all these little fiber opti optic little lights. And his little feet light up and his hands. Is that not cute or what? And this little guy is special. My kids all remember this little scarecrow from when they were little. And every year it's one of the first things they say, bring Mr. Scarecrow back out. And I used to sit him on all different kinds of things and I'd cross his legs and I'd put him in with pumpkins and hay and fall leaves, just a whole slew of things. So anyway, he's going to sit in this little wheelbarrow right about here. I don't want the fall to be covered up. Whoops, let me put this back here. So that's where he will sit. And then I'm gonna add one of these little picks right here. Now it's just a matter of adding in my pumpkins. So let's see, I want to put the corn here and a pumpkin here. Actually, I'm going to do the big one. Put a gourd right there. And then two more. Let's see. And that'll do it. Look how cute that is. And he's going to sit right in front of my Christmas tree in the foyer. So I'm going to go put him over there. I'll do a once over and then we'll close out the video. All right, well, here is my tree, my autumn tree, and the sun's just starting to set, if you can't tell. Um, and there is the little wheelbarrow with Mr. Scarecrow. So when you walk in the front door, he's here to greet you. He's here to say, welcome fall.
And so when you come in, there's the dual staircase on either side. And then here is Mr. Scarecrow. Say hello to the Scarecrow. I want you to say Happy Autumn to him. He's sitting right there. He's right there. Right there. All right, guys. Well, that will conclude my Monday's video. I thank you guys so much for stopping by and for all of your lovely comments, for your love and support. Y'all are the best. And um, I'll see you Wednesday with lots more decorating. And I think we're going to do the sunroom. So wait till you see it. Bye, guys. Say bye, Ralphie. Say bye. You have no clue. There's a video on you. Say bye. Say bye.